Good morning to all. Uh, my name is Father Ken Doyle, uh, Chancellor for Public Information for the Diocese, and I welcome uh, our media representatives and our diocesan department heads today, and I'm grateful for your presence. Uh, as all of us know, Bishop Hubbard has been Bishop of the Albany Diocese for 37 years. Uh, when he reached the age of 75 uh, last October, he submitted his resignation as is required to the Vatican. The Vatican accepted that resignation and asked him to stay in place until a new bishop is installed. Um, <coughs> bishop Hubbard, uh, when he was appointed in 1977, uh, at the age of 38, was the uh, youngest diocesan bishop in the country, and now he is the longest serving diocesan bishop uh, uh, in the country and uh, much beloved by so many people. Uh, today, we are pleased to received the announcement from Pope Francis of a new bishop for Albany, the 10th Bishop of Albany, uh, Bishop Edward Scharfenberger. Uh, we're all going to have to practice that name until it <laughs> rolls, rolls, rolls easily off, off, off the tongue. Uh, uh, Monsignor Scharfenberger is a priest of the Diocese of Brooklyn. Uh, he is a, a canon and a civil lawyer, uh, was uh, for about 10 years uh, the judicial vicar, which means the chief canonical officer for the diocese. Uh, but I think what mainly prepares him for being a bishop is that for the last 12 years he has been pastor of a large and multi-ethnic parish in, in, in Brooklyn. So we're happy to, uh, to welcome our new bishop. Uh, the media will have seen the press packet on your uh, chairs. You're welcome to take that. Uh, it has biographical information on, on the new bishop. It has the statements uh, that both bishops will give today. It has a picture of our, our new bishop. And it also has a, an, an added sheet of paper uh, with some new information that we just received recently, which is the date of the Episcopal ordination. On Thursday, the 10th of April, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at the cathedral, uh, bishop, uh, the new bishop will be installed, uh, ordained and installed as Bishop of Albany. Uh, the order of events today for our press conference uh, is this. Uh, bishop Hubbard will speak first, and then Bishop-elect Scharfenberger. Uh, and then they will be open to questions, questions to either one of them. Uh, following the press conference, both bishops will be available in the back of the room for individual questions. So if you have things that you would rather ask them individually, uh, they'll, they'll be available for, for that. Once again, thanks for coming, and now Bishop Hubbard. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Bishop Howard Hubbard. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. I used to be the Bishop of Albany, <laughs> but it was a great joy this morning that we welcome Bishop Elect Scharfenberger as the 10th Diocesan Bishop in Albany. I have served as the Bishop in the Diocese, as Father Doyle has noted, for the past 37 years. It's a diocese that consists of 14 counties, comprised of over 10,000 square miles, stemming from the Pennsylvania border to the Vermont border, from the Massachusetts state line to the Utica city line, from the northern Catskills to the southern Adirondacks. It's a diocese that's dotted with cities, towns, villages, rural and suburban communities. It's a diocese that's not only blessed with great physical beauty, but with the rich spiritual splendor of the 350,000 priests, deacons, religious, and lay faithful in the diocese. So I think, Bishop Scharfenberg, you're, you're going to have some of an adjustment <laughs> coming here to Albany. The Diocese of Brooklyn contains two boroughs or counties, Queens and Kings. It has 1.4 million Catholics, and 79 square miles. So, to make you feel at home, <laughs> I have a few presentations here. First of all, we have a map of the diocese. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Secondly, we have the Zucchetta from my predecessor, oh, Bishop Evan B. Broderick. Thank you very much. And to really make you feel at home, we have a Metz cap. Wonderful. 
<laughs> Seriously, I'm delighted that you're with us. We assure you of a warm and hospitable welcome on the part of the people of our diocese. And I know they will be very attentive and responsive to your spiritual leadership as our new shepherd. As Father Doyle has already indicated, Bishop-elect Scharfenberger comes to our diocese with a tremendous background. He is both a civil and canonical lawyer. He served as judicial vicar for the Diocese of Brooklyn. He was a pastor for 12 years at St. Matthias Parish, a multi-ethnic parish in Ridgewood. So he has become versed in many languages. And I'm sure that this will be very much appreciated by the growing Spanish-speaking community in our diocese. He is currently serving as vicar for Bishop DiMarzio in the Queens area. We are delighted that Pope Francis has granted us such a gifted leader with such rich legal, administrative, and pastoral background to serve as our new Chief Shepherd. We assure you, Bishop, of our prayers, our love, our loyalty, and support. Congratulations, best wishes, Godspeed always. Thank you very much. While you're standing, I, I just remember we forgot to say our prayers. So if we could just join me in a moment of prayer, first of all, uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of, of being called to bring your peace into the world you love so much. And we know that you've given us all so much love to share, but we want to say thank you. And thank you for one another, because we want to be your people, and not just in word, but mostly by example. So help us all to do what we do every day, but to do it with love and with confidence that wherever we are, you are always with us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Um, it's a little overwhelming. Uh, when I got the call the last Monday, actually from a friend of mine from the Brooklyn Diocese who happens to be working at the... Uh, Apostolic Nunciature, he said to me, in a few minutes, the priest is going to be calling you. And uh, I said, well, what did I do, you know? <laughs> and uh, and a, a little while later, I did get a call, and I thought it was him calling back again, too. So I must have said something like, so you just called me 10 minutes ago, and then it happened to be Archbishop uh, Vigano, who said, oh, this is the Apostolic Nuncio, and the Holy Father would like to ask you to be the Bishop of Albany. And uh, took me totally by surprise, but I'm delighted to be here. And, uh, I don't feel so far away from Brooklyn here. There is a river that connects us, you know? <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I, 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 I feel very much at home. I, I have to say I'm so thankful not only to our Holy Father for the confidence that he's placed in me, but for the incredible welcome that I've gotten since I've been here. Bishop Hubbard has treated me just like a brother when I got here, and I've met so many good people so far, and I'm looking forward to it meet all of you personally, hopefully as soon as possible. Thank you so much for your welcome. I much appreciate it. Um, I'm very grateful to my parents, Ed and Elaine, um, 93 years old. I don't know if they're watching this from home. I understand it's being streamed, but um, uh, they, um, they gave me life. They gave me the gift of life, and they were generous enough to have my two brothers and two sisters. I'm the oldest of five in my family. And I'm thankful to my parents, my brothers and sisters, my family for, really, they taught me how to pray. They say my first prayers. They taught me how to love Jesus. They taught me how to never forget that uh, Jesus was the center of our life and that nothing else mattered when you had Jesus. 
and uh, that's what gives me the confidence. It's, it's not me. As I say, I'm really humbled uh, in these, all these things about lawyer and, and Catholic. Please don't hold that against me. <laughs> <laughs> I, honest to God, I, 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 all of us have gifts to share, and God has given us some gifts. Uh, there have been bishops that have been, uh, uh, I know doctors, bishops that have been lawyers, uh, bishops that have been uh, architects, and all sorts of different things, and bishops that have been simple pastors. Of all of the things that God has given me to do, nothing is more important to me than the time that I've spent as a pastor, particularly in St. Matthias Parish. And uh, I say hello to all of the wonderful people at St. Matthias. And uh, uh, so I thank, I thank God for that gift. What do I ask? Very, very simply, help me to be myself. Please help me to be myself. Help me to be my best self. And my pledge to you, my promise to you, is that I'll try to bring out the best out of you. Um, so let's just get to know each other. Let's walk together. And it is a journey of faith that we continue, you know. Uh, Bishop, ha Bishop Hubbard has, has been such a wonderful pastor for so many years. And we're all on this journey together. And it continues. And yes, there's new personalities, new faces. But uh, Jesus stands in the midst of us. He's the common, common denominator. So let's never forget <clears throat> that we're never really alone. And uh, let's be kind to one another. And... Uh, there's a lot of hurt in the world, and we all know that. And there's a lot of expectations from us to bring the peace of Christ you know, to all of those that are hurting so much. There's a lot of healing to go on. And I think the best way to do that is to listen. I, I like to learn. That's one of the things I like. I like to learn. And to be a good learner, you have to be a good listener. So challenge me to be a good listener, to hear where you want to see the church to go to give me the guidance and the support to take you as your leader where God wants us to go. And God's going to speak through you. Sometimes, sometimes a shepherd needs some of the sheep to lead him to other sheep where he needs to go. And I will I'll look to you to show me that, where, where I need to be a bishop, you know, not just my priorities. So please uh, show me where the sheep are that need to be led back to us too. Because there are many people that certainly need to be welcomed or re-welcomed again. So God bless you. Thank you so much. And um, I know we'll be talking in the days and weeks and months and years ahead, hopefully, too. But um, I think we're at uh, question time. Okay. So, yes. On scene, your pleasure to meet you. Uh, Excuse me. Would, would, would you identify yourself and your media outlet? Uh, sure. Or when you say the question? Stand to. Uh, Matt Markham from WRGB, CBS 6. Going back a while, I'm curious, can you think of a moment when you realized that you wanted to be a priest, and if you ever thought you would be here where you are today? I have to say no and no, because I really can't remember at the time when I, I never got a, a call that said be a priest. I think what would happen was is I went to Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal Grammar School in Ridgewood, and I was impressed by the example of the priests in the parish. I liked what they did. I thought they were good men. They were kind to people. They were compassionate. They went into the classrooms and talked to us. They treated us, actually. But I think one of the things I liked about the priests is that they were close to us. They talked to us. You know, they weren't just like, you're a bunch of kids. They would come in. And I think that attracted me. And little by little, it began to grow in me that I think that's what I'd like to do. And uh, as far as did I ever think I would be here today, it, uh, maybe maybe to go to Lake George or something like that. But I don't want to bishop. <laughs> Honestly, no, you know. It never, never, never occurred to me that. I, I admired bishops, certainly, who, whose example I in like to follow. And bishop Ford, for example, comes to mind, the Marino bishop. and. And at times when I, when I would watch bishops, you know, in difficult situations, I would try to think, well, how would I do that? What would I say? You know, but it didn't occur to me I'd be standing here in, in this position. But thanks for the question. It's a very good one. I think a vocation kind of grows on you more than anything else. Yeah. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Sorry, back here. <laughs> Curry of Albanus, I'm with Time Warner Cable News. Yes. Um, I understand you're getting ordained in April. What are you going to be doing up until then to kind of prepare yourself? That's a good question. You know, there's two schools of thought on that, you know, and I, I think 
that the diocese is in very good hands right now. So I'm going to make myself scarce to be, I have a lot of work to do still in Brooklyn to wrap things up. So most of the time I'm going to be in Brooklyn. I'll continue doing what I'm doing as the bishop's vicar. And to the extent that they need me, I have my cell phone number. I'll be up here. If you need to get in contact with me, you can call me. But uh, I'm going to pretty much lay low here. I'll wait till, till uh, April the 10th. And I do have to make a retreat, a canonical retreat for a week. Uh, you know, just basically be silent and listen to God for a week. And... Uh, uh, so I'll be doing that as well, too. and then, uh, So I'll be involved in some of the preparations, but I think we're in good hands. I know there's been a lot of concern about recent closures of some of the churches. <coughs> what do you have to say to Catholics in our area about any further closings and how you might be handling that from here on out? I know that, as far as I'm concerned, everything that can be done to keep a parish community going, to keep a church open. We have to make every effort to do that. Sometimes we have to make decisions that are difficult decisions. Uh, if we can continue to support our structures that we have, if we can continue to keep them going, every effort needs to be made to do that. I don't know. I know a lot of work has been done in recent years in the merger of parishes, and I know that's always a very, very painful thing. I was involved in that in Brooklyn myself. We did a whole strategic planning process, we had to merge a number of parishes, and uh, my, my intent is, is not to close churches, but to encourage people to collaborate, to work together, so that we can maybe sometimes get things done better by working together. So if there's any way to make that collaboration happen, you know, that's what I'd like to encourage more than anything else. I think people are eager to find out how you're going to lead the diocese. Do you have a list of priorities, or is there anything we can expect to see change in the near future? I would say no, because you heard what I had to say about my view is that I am there to be a shepherd to the people who are here, not to come in with my plan as to what the diocese should be. So my goal right now is to listen and learn. I want to respond to the real needs of the people of this diocese, most of all, spiritual, but since we're not disembodied spirits, we're not angels, and sometimes we make mistakes, we have to look at that as well, too. Where are we hurting? What needs to be addressed? You know, what do the people of this diocese feel are priorities? And I think my role primarily is to elicit from the people uh, the vision that, that we need to have. I would say that uh, my vision is basically to bring the love of Jesus to everybody in some way. We do this sometimes institutionally, you know, through our Catholic charities, through the outreach that we, we have to the poor. Um, I'm most concerned about people that feel alienated from the church, people that have been hurt by the church, you know, in some way, or maybe some person in the church that represents the church that didn't behave the way they should. I'm concerned about that. We have to ask God's forgiveness for that. We have to ask people's forgiveness for that. But we also have to move forward in healing. So I would say, you know, if I could sum it up best, I'd say I want to be a healer. I want to be a listener. I want to be a reconciler. But I can't do it alone. I want to do it together with all of you, with all of the people. What are your thoughts on uh, so far the leadership of Pope Francis since he took over? And, you know, talk about maybe bringing people back into the church who have been hurt, or for whatever, whatever reason have drifted away. Uh, do you think his message will uh, help forward that goal, and, and can you incorporate that in any way uh, for the Catholics of the Old Diocese? Well, from what I'm hearing from a lot of people, a lot, many people have been very inspired by, by Pope Francis's leadership, um, and uh, uh, certainly I think his example is... I almost would say informality, the way he reaches out to people, and uh, I think has been an inspiration to so many people. So I think his actions speak for themselves, and uh, uh, he's also very helpful to me as a bishop because one of the things he's doing is he's teaching the bishops how to be bishops by his example, his, his open statements, you know. Uh, he introduced himself as the Bishop of Rome. Of course, the Bishop of Rome is the successor of Peter and is the the Pope, of course, but he spoke about that relationship between the pastor and his people, you know, the people and their pastor. And he sees himself primarily as a pastor of souls. 
that's the model I'd like to follow. Having been a staple in our diocese for so long, is there any part of Queens that you're bringing with you? Oh, boy. Well, I, I come from Ridgewood. I mean, that's the area that I came from. And Ridgewood has always been a community very kind to the immigrants. Um, I grew up hearing accents around me all the time because originally it was an Irish and a German neighborhood, so I grew up, I grew up smelling sauerkraut in the streets as we came home from church. And then the neighborhood changed little by little. People from parts of Latin America came in, and, and, uh, and then little by little people from Eastern Europe, Yugoslavians as we used to call them, Hungarian refugees, most recently Polish uh, immigrants came in. Uh, my own parish in Ridgewood, St. Matthias, is about one-third Polish, uh, one-third Hispanic, and many, many different, uh, from many different parts of Latin America and Central America and about one-third Irish German. So I grew up in that type of community. Ridgewood has always been a little tough on immigrants, too. You know, you had to clean your stoop, you had to shape up, you had to, you know, they're very, very, you know, protective of the environment in the neighborhood, but it's been welcoming at the same time. And uh, so that's in me, and that helps you to understand the part of Queens that I'm more likely to be like. You can't get Ridgewood out of guy, so I'm, I'm probably still a little bit of a rich boy. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Joe Condon from uh, Albany uh, Broadcasting. Considering the uh, tenure of your predecessor, do you kind of feel like, uh, actually I've got two questions, Jimmy Fallon following Jay Leno? <laughs> <laughs> uh, time will tell. <laughs> Quite Seriously, after April 10th, Bishop Hubbard has indicated that he's going to remain in the uh, Albany Roman Catholic Diocese. What do you uh, perceive as Bishop Hubbard's role after April 10th? Well, that's a good question. Uh, and, and Bishop Hubbard and I began a conversation. I certainly hope he stays with us and continues to. I'm going to need some help, too. So, uh, uh, But I, you have to ask him that question. I really don't know what his plans are. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I hope he stays just where he is and enjoys staying with us. Yeah. Um, one more? Yeah, time. Well, sure. This Q&A began with a question of when you heard the call to become a priest. Uh, this has been a challenge for, I guess, you know, decades in the Catholic Church, the decline of vocations Absolutely. and whatnot. So do you have any, any sort of new ideas to convince the flock out there, anybody in the flock, to hear the call? Is that, that you know, you asked me before what should be a priority. That should certainly be a priority. To, uh, to attract young men and women, clergy, religious, the priest of religious life, uh, diaconate. Um, I think, I'm just speaking right from my heart, uh, yeah. I think we need a perception of the church that the church is a fun place to be, is a good place to be, is a happy place. To, in fact, it's not even a place. It's a community of people who enjoy being human beings, helping one another, bringing the joy of the gospel out there. I think any young person would be attracted to that if that's what they see. But we have to be people that radiate joy, happiness. The gospel is attractive, you know, when it's lived the way Jesus showed us by his own example. And the extent to which we can do that and convey that joy, that it's fun to be a part of us, I think will increase that. Uh, and that's what certainly led me to be a priest because I saw happy priests. And uh, that's what I, I think will attract others to it as well. Okay. Thank you very much to both bishops and thank you to all of you for your attendance. Uh, and as I said, uh, both of the bishops will remain here for several minutes afterwards if you have individual questions for, for them. Thank you. Have a good day.